Hi, and welcome back to the Minimalist Wardrobe Workbook Series. This is part two, Closet Audit. If you've watched the other videos, you'll know, but I'm Christy Sumer from Encircled. I'm the founder and CEO. Encircled's a brand of ethical and versatile apparel that helps you do more with less in your closet. And in part two, we're gonna go over the key steps to taking action and streamlining your wardrobe. So in this part, we're gonna perform a closet audit. We're gonna start with referencing this page in the Minimalist Wardrobe Workbook, which you can grab off of our website. The link is in the description. In this step, you're gonna analyze each piece of your clothing. I know this sounds super intense, but it is a critical step in auditing your closet. So you're gonna sort everything into three piles. The first pile is keep. So these are items that you love wearing, you feel amazing in, you feel super confident, they fit well, the fabric is nice, they are not warped or stained or anything like that. These are pieces that are your go-tos in your closet for whatever occasion. So those go into your keep pile. The next pile is your hold pile. So this pile is really important because this is where a lot of stuff tends to end up. The kind of maybes, the pieces you spent a lot of money on but maybe you don't wear very often, but you have some sort of association with them, whether it's a memory or a positive um, experience wearing the clothing or maybe somebody gave it to you who you love and you just can't feel okay tossing it right now, then you're gonna put it in the whole pile. This is the kind of, I'm not sure about this piece of clothing pile. And the last pile we call the toss pile or the donate pile. So essentially these are pieces that no longer serve your lifestyle. So either they don't fit or maybe they're ripped and they can't be repaired or maybe they're completely not your style anymore. You want these pieces that are things that you haven't touched in let's say the last six months. These are pieces that you don't like, you don't feel great putting on, they don't fit you, um, and you don't see a future for them in your closet. So sorting into those three piles is critically important step to the closet audit. Next step, you are going to take your donate or toss pile and you're gonna set that somewhere aside. We're not gonna give it away right now, but we can talk about a few resources later on for figuring out where those clothing can go. So right now, just set it aside in a bin or a bag and we'll deal with that later. I'm gonna take the keep and hold items and put those together, perhaps on your bed or on the floor, on a clean towel or something like that, so we can start to reevaluate those as well. And then anything that you feel like out of your keep and hold pile that's not in season right now. So say, for example, you're watching this video in the winter time and you have a lot of keep um, and hold stuff that's for the summertime, then you wanna store that away right now. So you're gonna to wanna to separate that from those piles and just store it away until summertime when you can give it a fresh chance to be worn. Because right now it's probably not the best time if you're living in somewhere where there's four seasons to be, really evaluate your summer wardrobe in the winter time. So let's set those aside as well. The next step is to reference this page. Count what you got. And yes, I'm 100% serious. I want you to count everything you have. So we've made this handy template where you can go through and start to inventory what's left over in your keep and hold piles. Now this is also a very necessary but somewhat painful step for people depending on the size of your closet. So it's really important to take your time and do this properly. Again, remember what I said at the beginning, it's important to set aside somewhere between three to five hours because this will take some time. So you're gonna wanna start to count everything that you have into the categories here. And we also left a box for other in case there's stuff that doesn't fall into everything. And then you can start to see where you're heavying up in your closet. So say for example, you've got 100 t-shirts and two pairs of pants. We can see there's a problem in your closet right now. Maybe you don't have enough bottoms to go with those tops. And maybe you have too many casual t-shirts but you need more dressy tops. So this is a really important step um, to make sure that you're actually levering your closet to your activities and your lifestyle. So in this next step, we're gonna create your dream uniforms. And as I talked about earlier, women generally wear about 20% of our closets. So we really do have those go-to outfits that we reach for all the time in our closet. And there's a reason for that. It's typically because we love them, we feel confident in them, they really feel aligned with our style and they make us feel amazing. So we really wanna hone in on that, what that is for you, because that's super important to having a minimalist wardrobe and being able to actually wear the clothing that you have. So what we did in the first video, we started with three activities that you do most. Um, so let's reference back to that and think about what three things do you spend the most time on and what is your dress code or what is your general dress style for that? Because you really wanna hone in on how you're spending your time. For example, let's say you work in a corporate law firm. Generally, your style code would be around a professional business formal environment. So you're gonna need a lot of clothing that speaks to that or is versatile enough to work in that type of environment. 
Or for example, let's say you are an independent entrepreneur, you don't even have an office space, you can work from wherever, then your style uniform would be very, very different. The dress code there is pretty much anything goes. So that should lean into what your closet actually looks like. So now you're ready to create your three dream uniforms that you can reach for every single day of the week. So we're gonna use this template, create three outfits, and you're gonna do it for each of the three activities in which you spend the most time. So you can fill in here three outfits that you can wear for each of your three activities. There's three templates you can print off easily, and you're gonna put in the top, bottom, and outerwear, if applicable, shoes and accessories that go together to create that outfit that you love, love, love to wear. This is a really important step. So generally we wanna take our time and you wanna actually maybe try the cool thing on when you're doing this and see if, what it looks like. If you're like me, sometimes I like to take photos of myself in an outfit so I remember what looks good. That's an option as well. So don't be afraid to get creative here and get really hands-on with those keep and hold piles. And as you make those outfits, set that clothing aside in a separate pile because we know you're gonna be wearing that clothing because it's part of your dream outfits. And the last thing we're gonna ask you to do after you create your dream uniforms is to come on over on Instagram and tag us in your photos of your dream uniforms. We'd love to see what you're wearing and get inspired for our whole community to wear the clothing more and truly love what they own. And the last step is to look at what's left over. So what is in that hold and keep pile that doesn't need to be there? and maybe there's some stuff that needs to be there. So as a quick test, if you're not ready to let something go right now, and the true test to see if you're actually wearing it is to put it on a hanger and flip it around backwards. And then as you wear it, flip it around the right way. And then you'll start to see over the next like two to three months if you're actually wearing that item. If you come back in like 90 days and you haven't worn it, then that probably should move the toss because it's actually not adding value to your wardrobe. There are some things you want to consider with your hold pile as well. If you're not ready to let something go, it might be for a reason because maybe you're just not in that season of your life where you're wearing that item. Or perhaps it's a heavy investment piece. Perhaps you've spent a lot of money on a special occasion dress. It still fits, but you're not wearing it very often. Should you let that go? Maybe not. So maybe that becomes a hold item. Also pieces that are very timeless and have the ability to cross seasons and trends like a classic blazer, maybe something that you're not wearing right now but has potentially worn in the future. You might wanna keep that. Another exception to the toss pile will be sometimes active wear. So if you're not super active right now in the gym and you've invested a lot of money in a really great active wear collection, then maybe you don't want to donate or toss that at this moment. So keep a few key pieces that are in great condition and store those aside when you're ready to get back to your fitness routine. And the last exception I would say is family heirlooms. So if you've inherited something like that beaded clutch from your grandmother that you can't part with but you never use, that's okay, you can keep that. Maybe you hold on to it for a little while and see if it sparks joy for you in your closet and then you can reevaluate it later on. So the last thing we're gonna ask you to do now is take a good hard look at your hold pile. So is there anything in there that's duplicates of something that you're often wearing that maybe you don't need? Is there anything there that maybe doesn't fit as well as you think it should? Then move those items over to the toss pile because it's really important to not have pieces in your closet that are duplicates because it's unnecessary. You can just wear the other piece again and again. Another thing you wanna ask yourself is why is this item left over? Am I not wearing it? Am I not finding it to be on par with my style? And perhaps throughout this journey of defining your ideal style, you've realized this is not your style. So those items should be moved into the toss or donate pile. All right, that's it. So thanks for watching part two of the Minimalist Wardrobe Workbook series. If you never wanna miss a video, subscribe to our channel and leave us a comment. Tell us what your one dream uniform is that you most love. Leave it in the comments, we'd love to see. Thank you.